Hello everybody, my name is KevGuy378 and welcome back to If My Heart Had Wings. Uh, the last time we ended was when I was repairing the um, wheelchair tire. So, let's see uh, if we fix it or not. I immediately started on the repairs. She's behind me, so I can't see her expression, but I had a feeling I was being stared at with contempt. As I was quietly working, the duck was waddling around me and pecking at the soil. Is this duck your pet? Housemates? <laughs> Do ducks recognize their own names? When he's called, he responds by turning around. Hey, he's pretty smart. As I looked at the duck, I saw her legs laid out on the grass in my field of vision. So she can't move them? There are a number of reasons why people need to use a wheelchair, but it looked like she had a disability in her legs. When I picked her up just now, her body stiffened up with surprise, but there was no strength at all in her legs. The duck returned from his little excursion. While walking around her, he would occasionally try to jump onto her lap. She said as she made him get down again. As I watched this exchange from the corner of my eye, I fixed the flat tire. I, I don't walk around with those tools. That's not really the case though. I sometimes carry them with me. Aww. As she said that, she made a little hmm sound as she stretched. Yeah, it is. The wind blows through here. Five, five years ago, there were no windmills though. I've just come back to this town. She directed her gaze at something far away. Yeah. She suddenly looked down and seemed lonely and strangely sad. There was an awkward silence as they continued working. The duck twisted its neck to look up at the sky. She was tempted to look up too. What's that? There was something floating in the air. It was crossing the lake and gradually getting closer. At first I thought that it was a paper airplane that she had thrown coming back to us. But it wasn't. It crossed the lake and eventually reached the air above the small hill there where we were. An airplane? It's not paper, it's a real plane. But what is this? Its silhouette is much thinner than any plane I know and the wings are really big. A glider? I repeat the name as if to confirm it, and then look to the sky once more. With its big white wings and wide silhouette, it reminded me somewhat of a seagull. Oh, 
The glider is continuing to turn leisurely above our heads. It's flying ever so slowly. As it proceeded slowly across the blue sky, it seemed to be floating rather than flying. It looks like it would feel nice. The turning glider looks as if it had given up on rising and came down towards the top of our hill. I mean, it's not like it was coming down to the land. It was just reducing its altitude. Why don't we try waving? They might notice it, us. She earnestly stretched out her hand and waved towards the white aircraft floating in the sky. I don't know if the pilot noticed this or not. However, the wings reflected a gleaming light, and it really did look as if it was answering us calling out to it. Then, the glider turned its back to us and flew away, back to the other side of the lake, where it had come from. She mumbled sadly as she lowered her hand. Extend the little wings which fly in the sky highly. Oh, I heard so much of the this cicada sound in uh back in the day when I played uh, Harvest Moon on Game Boy Advance. I fixed a flat tire and went with her into the town. This is the residential area on the opposite bank of the lake to Wind, Windmill Hill, where we were just now. I'll take you back to your home. It seemed like she was going to say, but before she stopped speaking. For a girl with a walking disability, just because she was shown a little kindness, she can't bring some guy she hardly knows back to her house. Don't mention it. If your tire ever goes flat again, call me anytime. I only said it as a joke, but she blushed and looked down nervously. Hmm? If you're thanking me, you already did that just now. Yeah, me too. And I saw something unusual too. The glider that we had just seen was now flying in the air above the hill where we were just now. She murmured quietly and giggled. Coupled with her cute and dainty appearance was her lovely smile. Okay, take care. The wheels squeaked as she pushed the wheelchair along with her hands down an empty street. Behind her, the duck wearing a hat waddled along with her. Hey. She stopped her hands and turned to face me. See you again. She looked troubled and embarrassed, then left without saying anything. She sure was cute. Where is she from? Her appearance was quite graceful as if she were the daughter of a rich family. A little lady with a duck? It was an odd combination, but they seemed strangely familiar with each other. Okay, I'd better go. 
Now, I'm going to the dormitory called Flying Fish Manor. Due to certain circumstances, that place will be my new home. While walking along the gently sloping street, I look up at the clouds moving above. Floating so freely like that, they reminded me of the glider. That distinctive silhouette had left a mysterious impression on me. A huge house. That scary person looking through the window right there. The top left window, the four windows, square ones. Anyways. Oh, oh, I finally made, found it. This place. Is this it? Flying Fish Manor. There is such a big difference between its appearance and its name. That's like giving a tough looking Japanese Tosa a name like Lily. At least call it Mycin do flying fish or something. Phew. So I, even though I looked everywhere, I still couldn't find it. Because I thought, it's not this place. I completely ruined it out and then walked around and around this area. Even now, I still can't believe it. So I'll check the sign one more time. Flying Fish Manor. There's no doubt about it. Even so, I'm still not entirely convinced. I mean, I know a lot about this place. That's kind of spooky. It's an old European style building on the shore of the lake. And because its appearance is a little spooky. Oh, ha ah, ah, ha. There you go. When we were kids, we called this building the Witch's Mansion. As a test of courage, we would often sneak into the yard. We just thought it was a rich person's residence, but it's a dormitory. Keifu Private Academy Student Dormitory. I can't just stand here in shock. Phew. Ah, <sighs> okay. Take a deep breath and sit up straight. May I come in? Oh, hello, lightly dressed girl. Oh. Whoa. Suddenly a girl in her underwear appeared before me and the expression that I had tried so hard to straighten out crumbled instantly. I, um, uh, why? She's the one who should be worried about having been seen, but why am I the one feeling under pressure? Hello, girl wearing glasses. From inside, the other girl, this one was wearing clothes, showed her face, but when she saw me, she let out and she let out a hysteric scream. At the same time, the glasses she was wearing looked like they were about to slip off. Hello, tall girl. Another girl appeared. Huh? What? Huh? No, no, that's, that's not it. Just like a god of salvation, my cell phone rang. The word mom was shown on the display. Uh, excuse me a minute. Quickly pressed the bun to answer the call while swiftly escaping outside. Mom! <laughs> well, the place is full of girls. And I saw one in her underwear. Yeah? I checked the sign over and over, but then I noticed 
some small writing in the corner. Girls' dormitory. This is a girls' dormitory? Did you do this on purpose? What is this? What kind of mother are you? From now on, I'm going to, to going to be this place's dorm mother, aren't I? Just now, they were screaming at the top of their lungs. That damn mother of mine. She's enjoying this situation. And this is where I'm gonna um, stop the video. Everyone, thank you for watching. If you guys enjoyed, if you guys enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe to me. I'd appreciate it so much. It would help a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you, everybody. Bye. -bye.